Hey guys, Shia Wager here, bringing you a breakdown on one of the most dynamic, flexible, and clutch items every trio is utilizing in the Fortnite Champion series, the Shockwave Grenade. We're going to be taking a look at some of the basics on how it's used and misused at crucial moments in the game, and how to adapt and play against them towards the end game. To get started, let's get a refresher on what Shockwaves are and some of the basics of using them. Shockwave Grenades are a utility item that drop in stacks of 2, with a maximum stack size of 6. When thrown, the Shockwave launches anyone within its tile and a half radius far distances destroying builds in the process, with the added protection from fall damage for the players who use them. The most effective way to gain maximum distance is to time your jump well with a shockwave right below you, angling yourself above it for higher vertical movement, or towards the side of it in midair for horizontal coverage. If you do use a shockwave to rotate through builds late game, you will only be able to go through about 5 layers of wood, brick, or metal before you come to a stop. When going for height, if you don't get stopped by any opposing player's builds at all, you can reach upwards of 7.5 tiles in height giving anyone above you a surprise and changing both yours and your enemy's game plan in a split second. Although really easy to understand and use individually, once entering the atmosphere of trios and teamwork, the use of shockwaves enters a whole new dimension. There are deciding factors and win conditions if used properly, allowing for easy positioning and rotations. Using them and sticking together after the landing is efficient and gets your whole trio online ready to fire at a faster rate compared to the rest of the competition. Saving these grenades for later use brings an element of surprise as well, and a level of shock to the whole server. Looking at 8th and 9th zones with densely packed endgames, vertical shockwaves make high ground and mid ground layers crumble, and give patient trios and surviving solos a way to counter long tarps and bases towering above them. Facing off against 3 players usually proves fatal though, as you are vulnerable throughout your whole flight and easily targeted by the trio you're trying to attack. Turbo building walls on the way up from your shockwave can work against this though, but gives your newfound height, poor foundation, easily shot out and focused from below. Panicking with shockwaves in your own box and misusing them is always an irreversible mistake during the game, giving you poor positioning split away from your trio, costing you building resources, or ultimately you and your teammates their entire health and shield pool if used at the absolute incorrect moment. To counteract the chaos from shockwaves, new and clean strategies are put in place to negate the negative and potential mishaps in certain situations. When going for height, separately boxing up before using the shockwaves and going for height then allows you to have power in numbers as three players get a vertical rotation together, overwhelming the competition. Discovering new positioning and shockwave throwing angles and targets within your box might keep your trio and teammates closer together when using one shockwave to rotate saving crucial mats and attracting less attention during your mid-game rotations. You also save your total shockwave count by doing this, allowing for more opportunities to challenge high ground, grief low ground in the end game, or rotate in mid-game. Countermeasures can be taken too, such as keeping a teammate higher than normal, multiple layers above you, as in the event of a vertical shockwave, you still have someone up high who can rain down and support your trio on a retake. Keeping your own shockwaves handy is a way to counter anyone taking height off of you as well. But if both trios play mind games and the circle gets smaller, smaller, and smaller, the more likely a chance there is for a messy, repeat shockwave circus happening all at the same time. Player after player gets sent flying in the sky, with teammates all getting sent around in and out of the storm, off their tarp layers, and splits costing your trio more mats and resources than normal. Identifying these mistakes, staying in your lane, and watching teams move is a good way to anticipate and prevent disaster from striking before it happens. Although an item overlooked as simple mobility at first, the potential and efficiency of using shockwave grenades as a trio separates the good players from the great, and practicing, reviewing, and watching how plays are set up before they happen is a good way to keep in the loop, improve on mistakes, and get better retakes on height when using one of the most versatile items in the game. Keep your team's position in mind while breaking, jumping, and blasting into the air until you get it just right, and who knows, maybe you can have that top play or amazing clutch that saves your team while competing in the FNCS. This has been Shia Wager with the Shockwave Breakdown, and I'll be seeing you blast off in-game.